our last video, we were talking about latency and dealing with our playback engine, the amount of samples we're going to use. For example, here, playback engine. Here I have 64 samples set from my HW hardware buffer size, right? And so if I have a small or a low sample set up here, I'm going to have less latency. And so when I'm recording audio or recording inside of Pro Tools, I want to keep this number around here. So long as I don't get any of these pops and clicks going on, right? Because we want to minimize the additional input and output latency, which is the I.O. And when I'm mixing, I want to have the maximum samples. So I'm using all my power, my RAM, right here on my computer to help me use the power to make the session bigger. And since having more plugins, more tracks, I can do a lot more. Let's go back here to 64. I'll press OK. Now, within Pro Tools, you start recording a lot of tracks. You're going to get some latency somewhere where one track is behind another. You may get a track where there's a vocal and there's a chorus and you add a delay to it. And so, okay, that chorus may sound more delayed. It's recorded in the track. Then you add delay and we may have some drums or something that sound like they're in time that I recorded or that I actually just put in the samples. So there may be some delay going throughout the session. And what has happened over the years within Pro Tools, they came up with this idea called automatic delay compensation better known as ADC. Now, normally when you see ADC in your session, you'll see it right here, there'll be a DLY right here. And I suggest you have it on and turn it on when dealing with sessions. You may not need it for the first recordings, but from that point on, you will need it. When you're mixing or recording inside of Pro Tools, you wanna make sure everything is in sync. All the tracks start on time and there's no delay within the session. Now to set this up, you go here to our options and we want to make sure we have delay compensation on. So here is delay compensation, right? I select it and you'll see here a little red sign there, delay compensation. That's delay compensation. And so I want to set that up in my session. Let's go back to options again here. I can have low latency monitoring set up also as well. When I want to cut back on latency that's going on within the session and keep that out. Now, normally I want to just record first and then set up my delay compensation. And low latency monitoring will be on when I want to monitor and make sure I have low latency. This is very important when I'm recording vocals in. I want to make sure there's no lag time between the time the singer hears her voice and then the time that she sings it. So you may sing it and a slight lag happens. So the smaller amount of samples we use, the less latency we have. So now in this session, I have no tracks whatsoever, nothing set up. So delayed compensation doesn't see all the plugins going on that I had before when I had a full session lined up. So it's important when you start out with your session to be aware of when delay happens. You saw before that delay compensation was red. Now here in this option, this is a totally blank session. I'll go to my option of delay compensation, select it, and now it's just the regular color of green, like everything else is in this window. This is an important lesson to understand that when you do apply delay compensation, you should apply at the beginning of your session before you start doing anything within your system. All right. Maybe on the first track, no, if you're going to do vocals or something, but from that point on, you can apply delay compensation because you want to make sure from this point on that every track is recorded improperly and Pro Tools will make sure it's compensated